All right, I'm gonna go over where this is gonna fit on the van at. And as luck would have it, it rained last night. So I'm gonna show you uh, kind of the aftermath. And if you've looked at yours, your ProMaster, if it's rained, you've probably seen similar things. So this is gonna go on here in this orientation, 3.6 liter toward the front. I don't know how much of this is gonna be left because this is pretty big to fit in here. Um, so if you see there's two posts toward the front, and you have two other posts back here toward the back that are a little closer together. So you can see those where they're gonna go. Right here is what I'm talking about, these posts. Those are gonna fit on the posts on the motor. So, let me move that out of the way. So you can see right in here, yeah, let me back up here so you can see your orientation. So you're coming in, and right here in the back, here's one post. Right there, you can see the rounded off top. And the other one is right here, right there, hidden by this wire, which should be attached to something. Doesn't look like it's attached to anything. Maybe it never was. But right here's where our other post will go. And then I'm swinging you around to the front here. Uh, right here, your front left. And then Going to the other side, you can see here's your front right, right here. So I have the light on my camera on, so I can show you this, look at this. This is just, just full of water. And you can imagine down in there, you can see actually that uh, that's full of water down there too, as well. So this is what people are complaining about. All the water is going to go down in there. One of the one of the complaints that all the water will go down in there. That if you ever have to take this intake manifold off, your screws are going to be rusted. They're just going to break off. Um, another part is when all the water is coming down. You've got your fuse box right here. Uh, water can get into any of this. It's going to just just wreak havoc on things. You have two of your other large hookups right here. And I've only done a couple of things, but I have a major, uh, major thing I'm going to do here pretty soon. Pretty, I call it major, but you know, this is just a little bit of uh, caulking that didn't hold up very long at all, just to try and keep the center here. But I can already see through there. So I actually have some uh, some better Permatex windshield type adhesive. Um, see, they're coming. Um, and I've already gone in and. You know, even cleaned out some of the, the drain things here. If you watch these other videos, with, you know, if you're here, you probably know about all this stuff. But that one was broken out of there. It was clogged. So I need to redo all these. That needs to be lowered down so the water can go in there easier. But one of your main things is I've watched when it rains, the water will come right down. And it's, it's just coming right down between this whole seam here. So that, that's one of the problems. And then it's just going to come down. It's going to go all over the engine, as you can see it has. And then our other main problem is the cowl. So let me put the winch, the uh, hood down. So mine's not as bad as a lot of people's, but if you look right here at the cowl, there's a little, little gap behind the windshield. And it's a little more pronounced on the other side over here. Right there, look at that. The water is just going to go right underneath that. Going to come down and go right underneath there. The windshield wipers will help a little bit. Thank goodness they're there. So that's one of the things you want to, you know, there are some clips in here, which I haven't looked at yet, but a lot of people are saying there's some small clips that you can replace that help hold this tight. So I might look into that. And then also, I have a lift on the front of my van, so it keeps it, so it's not tilted forward so much, but any water that comes on the top of your van is going to actually all run down the roof, down your front, down the windshield, and right onto your engine if you have this cowl problem. So one thing I've seen some people do is actually put one of the rain gutters, a J channel, it's called sometimes, just across across the whole top of the windshield here. And so any of that water that's going to come from the top of the van will be diverted off to the sides. You know, a lot of people use that same J channel on, on the side above their slider door. So I think that's probably a good thing. It, all that in combination can be one of the best things you could do is just to try and keep the smallest amount of water you can from getting down toward the front. So 
I'm gonna start going at this uh, engine cover now and we'll see where we get. Right. Here's what I received. I paid about $50 for this on eBay. You can see it's for a 3.6 liter. You're looking for a uh, 2011 to a 2018 Chrysler Town & Country or a Dodge Grand Caravan. You know, double check that, but that's what this piece says it will fit uh, when I ordered it. So on the bottom, you can see it still has all the sound deadening. Uh, this is a thinner foam here. It's got a thicker one here. Uh, right here is where the engine posts are. Uh, so from what I've read, these are going to be the same on our engine because it's the same engine. Um, you know, these things also came, these engines also came in uh, Camaros as well, the Jeeps. Um, but I, I don't know about the tops on those. I just know that I was able to look for one of these for a Grand Caravan or a town and country, and they should have this shroud um, already on them from the factory so you could buy those. I'll probably end up taking off uh, all the sound deadening because I'm not using it to make the engine quieter. I just want something to cover it to keep the water from going in any crevices on the top. Crevices? Crevasses? So anyway, you can see this came with all but one of the rubber pieces here, the insulators that are, that are gonna actually, you're gonna need those to, because they're gonna go on the pins that stick up from your engine. Uh, so I'll probably end up taking all the sat and off. There's just some retainers uh, down in here. Just pry those off with probably a screwdriver and we'll get all that off of there. But we're going to hack this up. We're going to get it to fit. And then we'll come back and I'll show you kind of what we ended up with for this piece. So that would fit on our, our ProMaster. To have a little bit more clearance and an easier time of doing this, uh, I want to pull off this air intake here. So your air, your air comes in through these holes here. Not that you need to know that for this, but I figured I'd tell you anyway. And it's going to go through there, and it comes out of this, and then it goes down here into your air box. This is where your air filter is, by the way. You should check that and replace it once in a while. So this first elbow here is held on by two screws and just one on each corner. So when it's in here, there's one up on the corner up here, and then there's one down below down here. So we're going to take those out, and I can tell you that make sure you get the right size screwdriver because these things just want to strip out. You know, I don't know, this, the normal, I guess some kind of Fiat screw head type size. And then after that, you've got, you'll want to go ahead and uh, also, of course, loosen these first. You can just use a flathead on these. So flathead on this end, and then down here, there's another flathead that's around the side. But you're not even probably going to be able to get this out because I, I couldn't until you remove this elbow. So once we get that out of there, we'll have more clearance to mess around with the, the cover for the engine. And, you know, I'm wondering how the engine cover is going to fit with this tube still here. Hopefully it'll go just underneath that tube. Uh, but we'll see. Okay, as we're going along here, a couple little fitment tips. So I've uh, cut this up quite a bit to make it fit in here so far but once we remove that intake pipe it made a huge difference once that's gone um, so you need to cut this off so you're going to clear these and clear this post here too but these you need to clear and so far i'm up to the 3.6 liter which would be awesome to leave that on there because i don't want anyone to think that i have the diesel i know that's a low blow for you diesel owners but yeah, so on uh, the left side over here, you can see we're just about on, right there, we're good on the uh, post so far. This, I'm waiting to see if this hose is going to cause a problem. I unhooked it from the breather here. Um, so once we finish up kind of fitment the rest of this, if, hopefully it can go down far enough because this hose runs across the top of the intake manifold. And I don't know if it's situated that way or not on the, you know, the caravan or whatnot. So, um, but do, we are going to need to cut out all this right here on the side or just one certain spot where this hose is going to come through and then, you know, it connects because the provision for it to come through is actually back on the back corner on the other vans. So it definitely was routed differently because it did come out back there, but hopefully that's not going to cause us a problem with getting this cover to go down far enough. Uh, the back had to cut off the corner over here because you cannot, you're hitting the firewall right here. You're hitting the firewall, so that can be a problem. So you need to get that all cut off. And then on the front down here, let's try and spin you, spin you around. 
we are going to need to cut off some more here and we might have a fitment, fitment problem too when we go to put on our elbow. So I'm wondering how much more we're going to have to cut. We might have to cut a larger area out of here to get that intake elbow back on. We'll see. And I'm trying to cut this down far enough too where it's not going to be a hassle, a complete nightmare to get this in and out. So it looks like, you know, as of now, we'll be able to check, check the oil fine, uh, add oil. I'll probably actually cut this out here a little more so the dipstick isn't actually interfered with at all. And our oil filter is still right down there. So that's still accessible without messing with the engine cover. So mainly the main thing you want to do is picture your water running off. As long as it gets over here to the edge, you know, then you're good. So we could cut off most of this right here. We just want it to be able to bring the water out as far as it can, this shield, this cover. We want it to bring the water out as far as we can. You can see how this has been wiped out before. All the water that's come down, you know, when it comes down in your hood vent into this, and this just gets filled with water inside. And, uh, you know, it's ran out over here. I could, when I had my, uh, there's a rubber seal that I already took off here. But when I had the rubber seal on here, you could see where the water had been coming out of here and just and it accumulates. You can see it's still wet. So we're going to keep on moving. While well, putting the intake tubes back on, I can see right here we're, we're, gonna, we're hitting pretty good, especially when the other elbow's on here. This actually pushes down onto the engine cover pretty good. So since there's nothing else under here to protect really toward the edge, I'm going to go ahead and actually mark this and cut this up around so there's not so much pressure here because this engine needs to move. All right, we're burning daylight, people, so went ahead and brought out my light. Doesn't look bad when you're out here, but it's actually pretty dark in the engine bay. All right, so hopefully this is the last bit of trimming we're going to do. Uh, I went ahead and did some scientific looking and anything cut up under here on the engine, there's nothing that you need to worry about protecting. So I've cut this back about as far as you can go by the post, straight across over here. And then I went ahead and dropped in a six liter engine. I'm hoping that'll help us out on the highway a little bit. Um, you know, eighth grade, it's always going between eighth and uh, seventh gear. So let's go ahead and see if we can put this in. See if I can do this without jarring you around too much. And I want to show you one other thing. We can get this in here. Okay. All right, line up where you're supposed to line up at. All right, there's one on, two on. And three on. All right, we have them all on. And can you see that? The intake piping is already there. So yeah, if you cut this back far enough and do everything perfectly, because that's how I did it. Just kidding. But if you've had this out as many times as I have and in, then uh, you should have it pretty close to perfect. So Yep, this right here will solve you from actually having to remove the intake piping to pull this off. If you need to do anything in here underneath this, now you can get it out if you cut it like I just showed you without having to remove your intake piping. And I know for a lot of you people that are full-timing, you know, anything you can do to stop any sort of repair or having your vehicle down. And, and this water problem that these things have is one of the most costly ones I've seen for people other than the transmissions. But you know, this just, this just turns into gremlins and all sorts of problems with the water. Uh, I'll be posting up a, another windshield one later on probably where I'm going to go through and kind of just seal up some of the stuff. There's, you know, there's a lot of those out there already. So I'll go through those and see if I have anything that I can add. Um, I'll be doing, some other videos on some other things I have in the van. I actually have uh, some pretty cool stuff. Um, I don't know if I'll do like a full on van walkthrough, but you know, this is just as it sits right now. But if you look up there, that silver thing, that's actually a shower tent that goes out the back doors and everything. So, but it's perfectly kept inside. So can't see it still kind of stealthy, you know, if you're 
going for that sort of thing, but you can get out of town or get wherever and you can open up the doors and deploy that and have a shower in no time. Uh, so I'll, I'll be showing a few other things um, when I get around to it, but if this helped you out and you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll catch you later.